कंपेयर टू इक्विटी मार्केट और कैश मार्केट ट्रेडिंग ऑप्शन एज अ टॉपिक लुक अ बिट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इट्स मेनली बिकॉज ऑफ टू रीजन द फर्स्ट रीजन इज ह्यूमंगस अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा विच इज इन्वॉल्व when we go to nse website to look at option chain data of any stock or any index or we look at our broker's website and thousands of number which appear on our screen and we get lost what is the second reason the second reason is there are too many technical terms involved okay so when i say technical terms what are those terms there is a strike price there is a intrinsic value then there is a call option data put option data there is a time value of money there is something called open interest data then there is a premium in the money out of the money options yeah short and long build up margin requirement expiry spread strategy strangle volatility straddle and then comes the greeks where we deal with delta theta and gamma yeah so all in all there are so many technical terms that we get lost so the overall objective to make this video is to you know make you understand about the basics of options start with the basics and take you through the advanced level of options trading how do we build you know different strategies in different scenarios options are nothing but the insurance so it's very easy to understand if you think it in terms of insurance so just like a person takes an insurance on his assets so for example here assets could be his car his property his health or his life so similarly options was also introduced in the market for an investor to hedge his assets that is the shares that he has bought right the fundamental mistake that people are doing today is that they are you know investing into options without having a substantial sum of their capital invested into equity market it's because people believe that you know they can earn quick profits through options okay but if you are being practical would you ever buy an insurance on a car if you don't actually own it then why would you want to buy an option if you don't actually own the shares okay so please understand the purpose of options it's very very important okay now let's quickly see how insurance company works in real life so there are two parties involved in any insurance contract so the first party as you know that the first party is of course you or the insurance buyer and the second party is the insurance company or the insurance seller what happens in an insurance contract there is a contract which is entered between option insurance buyer and the insurance company that if a certain event takes place in future insurance company is liable to pay to insurance buyer a specific sum of money so let's take an example of car insurance okay so assuming that you have bought a car insurance and in, you have uh, you know entered into a contract with insurance company that if a particular event happens that is in this case maybe the car car accident happens and then you have to pay a huge sum of money to repair your car then insurance company is liable to pay to you rupees 5 lakh rupees or it could be variable also depending on the contract you have an option you don't have any obligation once you have paid the premium to insurance company but who is the major risk taker over here the insurance company they are taking the major risk why because they are obligated to perform the duty unlike the insurance buyer they have the obligation if the insurance buyer comes saying that okay that certain event has taken place now you are obligated to pay me the amount that we have already contracted yeah so to take this risk they are charging insurance buyer a premium so you initially while entering the contract you pay certain premium to insurance company and the, this premium amount is very very small okay so for example for 5 lakh rupees of some assured you are just paying some 5000 rupees to insurance company why insurance company would take such a huge risk for such a small sum of money it's because the theme of insurance company okay it works on two pillars the first one is there is a large number of contracts yeah it's not just 100 or 200 contracts that they get they would be getting lakhs and lakhs of contracts from different people in the amount of revenue that an insurance company is getting that is huge the second theme of insurance company on which it works is the probability the number of claims so the number of claims are very small as compared to the number of contracts that they actually get so all in all they are in net profits so even if you look at sbi life insurance or sdfc life insurance most of these companies are having very very good margin understand quickly how options work okay so i have drawn the similar picture so here also we have buyer and the seller and then there is a contract between buyer and the seller saying that if a certain 
event takes place in future then seller is obligated to pay to the buyer a certain amount of money so here the amount is var variable not the fixed amount we'll you know see later on how this amount is calculated and what are those events on which a contract can take place between buyer and the seller buyer always has an option okay they don't have any obligation to perform a duty at a future date but as a seller you know he is the person who is taking the major risk for taking that risk option seller is charging option buyer a certain premium at the initial stage now the next thing is what is the maximum profit for an option seller the maximum profit for option seller is always fixed and this amount is equal to the initial premium that he has received he cannot have profits more than the premium that he has already received similarly for option buyer what could be the maximum loss equal to the initial premium that he has already paid so for buyer this is the maximum loss and for seller the same amount becomes the maximum profit what would be the maximum loss for an option seller and what could be the maximum profits for insurance buyer so you know we will understand this later on once we understand what are the events okay and what is the amount that option seller is liable to pay in case that event takes place for now you just understand that maximum loss for the seller is unlimited okay and maximum profit for option buyer is unlimited okay so uh, before moving further let's understand what is the expiry date of an option contract okay so every option contract has a certain time duration okay so they will expire on a certain time certain specific dates okay which are already fixed by nse so you have option to trade either on index okay or on stocks right you can take option on index that is nifty or bank nifty or you have option to take you know options on stocks as well so for index it is a weekly expiry it's a weekly expiry and for stocks it is always monthly so you don't have any stock options for weekly expiry yeah and what is the expiration date so it is every thursday so every thursday of the week every thursday in case of index and it is last thursday last thursday of the month is the expiry for stock options okay let's understand what are the events in an option contract okay see similar to insurance contract the event is already decided between the option buyer and the option seller that if this particular event occurs option seller is liable to pay to the option buyer a certain sum of money okay now let us understand what is event in the case of option we will take one example of index option that is nifty so nifty is currently trading at let's say 17000 okay this is just an hypothetical example it can move to 17500 it can go down to 16500 or it may remain at 17000 level depending on the market situation so what is call option so if you believe that nifty will go in the upside direction it may cross to 17500 or it may go to 18000 you enter into call option or you buy a call option if you believe that nifty will go down to 16500 or even below that then you buy a put option okay so in essence if you are bullish then you buy call option if you are bearish bearish you you know buy a put option so let's understand this further so nifty is currently at 17000 okay again the hypothetical figure that we are going to take in each of the example and as a option buyer you believe that nifty is going in the upside direction in next few days and then you decide that i am going to enter into a call option contract where i am going to buy a call option so as i told you like an insurance in an option contract also you need to decide upon what is that particular event on the occurrence of which option seller would become liable to pay you some money okay so in option contract what happens is you know there are multiple events like 17500 so if you believe that nifty will go beyond 17500 so that becomes one event you believe that nifty goes above 18000 okay so that is also one of the contract that you can enter into so that again becomes one event so to make it simplified for the users or for the investor nsc has already decided upon multiple events okay on index option 
which is already there in their website okay and as an option buyer you have option to choose any of the events which are already listed down so you can see here i have listed down five contracts with five events which is available for you to enter okay so if you look at the first contract which says that 17500 call option so see over here means call option okay so what does this mean so 17500 call option this means that if nifty on expiry day goes beyond 17500 then option seller becomes liable to pay to you or to the option buyer the differential amount okay for example if nifty goes to 18000 then option seller will pay option buyer the differential amount that is 18000 minus 17500 that is equal to 500 rupees similarly for the second contract it is 17300 call option so you would be able to now speak it out this means that if you are entering into this contract if on expiry nifty goes above 17300 then option seller becomes liable to pay to option buyer the differential sum of money so just to take one uh, quick example if nifty goes to 17500 by expiry and if you have bought this call option this means that option seller is liable to pay to you 200 rupees that is the differential amount on expiry day okay similarly 17000 16800 and 16500 Let's just once more, you know, speak this contract out. If you have entered into sixteen thousand five hundred call option, okay, you have bought this. This means that if Nifty on expiry day goes above sixteen thousand five hundred, then option seller is liable to pay to option buyer the differential sum of money. This current market price of Nifty is already above sixteen thousand five hundred, right? So this means that as an option seller, okay, the other party, the insurance company. they are already in the loss of 500 rupees correct because if this contract has to be matured today then option seller will have to pay to option buyer the differential sum of money right 500 rupees he has to pay today only so option seller is already incurring a loss of 500 rupees so what he is going to do is if you enter into this contract then option seller is going to charge you 500 rupees for the differential amount he will say that see i am already in the loss of 500 rupees so you first pay me 500 rupees as the premium plus something so as a insurance buyer you are supposed to pay insurance company 500 rupees that is for the differential amount plus something what is that plus something plus something for example he will also charge you rupees 50 okay so in total he is going to charge you 550 rupees per share the lot size of nifty is 50 share so you cannot enter into one share of nifty as a option contract so whenever you you know enter into any option contract it you know it works in a lot sizes and lot size for nifty is 50 which is already fixed okay. now 500 rupees you have understood this in technical terms is called as intrinsic value what is this called this is called as intrinsic value because already the option seller is in the loss of 500 rupees so up front he charges rupees 500 from the option buyer now this 50 rupees he charges for the risk that he is taking because of the time left in the option ex expiry yeah for example if you are standing today and then there is a let's say there is 15 days left for the option to expire so during this 15 days nifty can take any violent move right this 16500 contract is there but nifty can go to 18000 also right so in that case option seller will have to incur a huge loss think because of the risk that he is taking he will charge some small amount from the option buyer so in this case for example 50 rupees will come to this 50 rupees how it is calculated as of now i have already told you how intrinsic value is calculated that is just the difference between the strike price and nifty's current price okay now let's move to the fourth option okay we will go from the start starting from the bottom we are moving upwards let's try to speak it out and try to find out what could be the premium for this with some approximation you can find out what is the premium that could be there for this 16800 call option so let's first first speak it out if nifty goes above 16800 on expiry day then option seller will pay option buyer the differential sum of money so if nifty goes to 17000 he is liable to pay to you 200 rupees if it goes to 17500 then he is liable to pay to option buyer 700 rupees per share this in this option also current market price of nifty which is around 17000 it is already above 16800 okay so now you can say that option seller is in the loss of 200 rupees so he is going to charge that 200 this is for the intrinsic value this is because of the loss he is incurring 
as on today he is charging 200 rupees from the option buyer plus something this plus something here would be around 100 rupees again don't go into how this 100 rupees is calculated i will explain that later on but you just understand that this is for the risk that he is taking because of the time left in the expiry so in total he will be charging 300 rupees from the option seller okay now quickly uh, try to figure out what would be the premium in these three cases so 17000 so since 17000 current market price is also 17000 so there is no loss for the option seller as on today so he cannot charge anything for the intrinsic value so there is no loss for option seller as on today so he cannot charge you anything at least for intrinsic value but he is going to charge you for the risk that he is taking so in this example let's say this would be 150 and the total premium comes to 150 similarly for 17300 this means that if nifty goes beyond 17300 then option seller is liable to pay to the option buyer the differential sum of money so now first thing what option seller will check is that as on today whether he is incurring any loss or not so he will see that okay nifty is at 17000 and he is saying that beyond 17300 only he needs to pay so as on today he is not incurring any losses so intrinsic value in this case also becomes zero but here he will be charging something for the risk that he is taking okay so in this example he would charge around 100 rupees just some approximation i am saying and the total premium of 100 similarly in this case there will be no intrinsic value and he will be charging some amount for the premium okay so in this case the total premium amount would be 50 rupees here the event means in technical term strike price okay so as i showed you in the first slide that there are different technical terms which are involved okay so we will try to understand in a simpler way okay first we try to understand what is the meaning of that and then i will tell you what is the technical term behind each of these concepts but in technical term it is called as tvm or time value of money okay okay now let's move okay so now uh, you know the total premium is written over here for the different strike prices yeah so the total premium is divided into two parts one is intrinsic value one is tvm that is time value of money let's understand one more technical term over here so currently nifty is trading at 17000 right nifty is currently at 17000 and if you see the 17000 call option this is called as at the money option okay and all the strike prices which are below the 17000 these are called as in the money call option okay why they are called in the money call option because there are some moneyness involved already today which means that they have some value they have some money today itself because of which you are paying some intrinsic value to the option seller okay so if certain strike price or certain event has some intrinsic value today you will call that as a in the money option and if it doesn't have any value then you call it as a out of the money option okay so you call it as a out of the money option okay now understand what happens on the expiry day you know based on nifty's price movement how do we calculate the premium so let me tell you the calculation of premium is exactly the same the way we calculated here while standing as on today so as on today we had broken the entire premium into two parts right intrinsic value and time value of money exactly in the similar fashion we are going to you know calculate the intrinsic value and the time value of money and then arrive at the total premium on expiry day okay i will take one example over here let's say nifty you know on expiry day so nifty on expiry day goes to 17200 okay that is quite possible right currently it is at 17000 and nifty closes at 17200 on expiry day now based on this price and based on looking at the contracts we need to figure out what would be the intrinsic value and what would be the uh, time value of money and what would be the total premium on expiry day it is very easy to calculate so i will just uh, you know start sharing it so let's see first the example of 17500 that is the first contract so our contract was with the option seller that if nifty goes above 17500 then option seller is liable to pay to us the differential amount so in this case since nifty remained at 17200 it did not go above 17500 this total premium on expiry day becomes zero we will also calculate what is the profit and loss in each of these cases okay so let us also ca calculate profit and loss from the 
perspective of option buyer so option buyer paid 50 rupees initially while entering into a contract but since that event didn't occur on the expiry day he will not receive anything from the option seller so his total loss would be rupees 50 per share of course you will multiply with the lot size into 50 equal to 2500 will be his total loss so in this case intrinsic value is also zero and time value is also zero what will happen in the next case we entered into a contract for 17300 call option since nifty did not cross 17300 it remained remained at 17200 so once again the total premium became zero and the total loss that an option buyer incurred is around 100, 100 rupees so whatever is the loss for option buyer this becomes the profits for option seller so in this case also intrinsic value is zero and the time value is also zero okay what will happen in the third contract 17000 call option so here we entered into a contract that if nifty goes above 17000 then option seller would pay option buyer the differential sum of money and you can see that nifty has reached to 17200 so what is the amount for intrinsic value over here that is 200 rupees right that is the differential there is the same thing we saw over here also the same concept applies on the expiry date so we entered into 17000 contract and nifty on expiry is around 17200 so 200 rupees is the intrinsic value of the option on the expiry date time value of money always becomes zero on the expiry date so this part of calculation becomes very easy for you you can simply put zero against time value of money for all the option contract okay time value part of the total premium always become zero the total premium on expiry day is nothing but just the intrinsic value so if you are able to calculate the intrinsic value on the expiry day you would be able to calculate the total premium on the expiry day so what is the profit of option buyer in this case 200 rupees he received 150 rupees he paid initially so his profit is 50 rupees what happens in the next case i will quickly put 16800 and nifty reaches to 17200 so the differential amount is 400 so what is his profit on the expiry day that is 100 rupees per share for 400 minus 300 what happens in the next case 16500 and nifty is currently at 17200 so option seller is liable to pay to option buyer 700 for the intrinsic value on the expiry day and of course the tvm is already zero so the total amount that an option buyer receives is 700 rupees for this he paid around 550 initially so what is his profit 150 rupees the earlier nifty's price of 17000 okay the 17000 which was there on your contract entry date this becomes irrelevant on the expiry day you always have to compare the current market price of nifty on the expiry day with the strike price okay because this is the event on which you took the contract so you will always compare against this not this so that's the entire calculation you can take different examples i have taken 17200 you can take 16500 then what happens you can take 18000 then what happens the calculation part remains same just make tvm as the zero and intrinsic value would only be there if the market price is above the strike price or the event price and then accordingly you calculate the profit and loss which is very simple this premium minus the premium that you paid initially so i will take you to the nsc website and show you nifty's option chain data okay now i am at nsc's website and i am showing you how to read the nifty's option chain data please you can see that nifty is selected over here okay you can select bank nifty or if you want to select a stock you can select from here and then there are different expiry day so as i told you that for nifty there is a weekly expiry day you can select any of the contract from here you can select the strike prices and you can find the premium from here okay uh, so you know to understand this entire option chain data what we can do is we can divide this entire option chain into four quadrants this is how you will divide so you can see that there is some gray area over here and then there is a white area okay and here you can see some white area and then there is some gray area over here yeah on the left hand side of this straight line you can find all the data related to call option on the right hand side you can find all the data related to put option okay now you can see here in the middle there is something called strike price now as on today when i am making this video nifty is currently trading at around 17200 300 i am just rounding it off and assuming that nifty is currently trading at 17300 as on today so everything 
which is below this all the strike price you can see here all the strike prices are mentioned over here so any strike price which is below 17300 it is called as in the money this is something that we have already learned yeah and all the strike prices which are above 17300 since there is no moneyness since there is no intrinsic value so this is called as out of the money call option similarly for put option here it will be out of the money and all the data which is below the strike price this is called as in the money data for the put option because it just works in the reverse manner i am not explaining you put option as of now i am only explaining you as of now the call option data with the help of that you can understand how it works okay so the 17300 is called as add the money okay so add the money call option now you can see here some there is something called ltp on your screen ltp that is last traded price this is nothing but the premium for each of these events these ltp is already decided by market okay now that you know what is the premium against each of these strike prices would you be able to calculate what is intrinsic value and what is time value of money i hope that you would be able to do for example 17500 strike price so you can see here the premium is already calculated over here so we need to be able to segregate this into two parts one is intrinsic value and one is time value of money as on today what is the intrinsic value so intrinsic value as on today is zero because there is no moneyness as on today option seller is not at any losses so he will not charge anything for intrinsic value so what he is charging 86.3 that is because of time value of money okay that is because of time value of money so you know all for all the strike price the premium that you are that you are seeing on the screen okay all this 26 19 151 that is only because of time value of money and you can see that as it is increasing and going towards add the money option 17300 it is increasing okay for this 18000 which is called as far out of the money okay it is quite far out of the money option there the premium is only 6.2 but it is increasing as it is moving in the upside direction and near at the money data the time value of money is highest okay of course the intrinsic value is zero in all these cases okay now what happens in case of in the money data here also we have premium and it is you know very very high amount it's because every premium has two parts so if you are looking at 17100 okay strike price and the premium is 301 so we can divide this into two parts so intrinsic value is what in this case 17100 minus 17300 that is 200 so the remaining amount of 101 rupees that is because of time value of money so i hope that this concept is clear you are able to calculate what is intrinsic value and what is time value of money by looking at the strike price by looking at the current market price what will happen on the expiry day all the time value this will become zero the time value will become zero the remaining amount of premium will only be because of intrinsic value and intrinsic value will only be there if the nifty comes into in the money okay, there are a lot of other terms also involved here you can see here open interest change in oi volume iv we are going to discuss about all these terms in the next video let us quickly summarize which all technical terms that we learned in today's session now we know what is the strike price, what is the call option, what is the put option, what is the premium and the segregation between intrinsic value and the time value of money. We also know what is in the money option, what is out of the money option and also what is add the money option. Okay. We also know what is the expiry day in case of options. So in case of index, it is weekly expiry. In case of stock options, it is monthly expiry. Now that we have learnt the basics of options, we can build upon further concepts of options over this foundation. If you have any questions, you can always ask in the comment section or ping me on the telegram channel. If you enjoyed today's session, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to receive the notifications on the upcoming concept videos. Till then, happy investing and I will see you soon. Thank you.